All right, so it's been a while since I've been out here and videoed my uh, little garage project here of sheetrocking the ceiling and insulating the ceiling. This, uh, this little project's grown some hair. <laughs> As you can see, uh, I just picked up a compressor, a bigger compressor, and then decided that if I was going to insulate the ceiling, I better insulate the walls. And if I was going to do that, I probably ought to put some power in. So I uh, ran this wire over before we sheetrocked the ceiling, put a sub panel here on this wall, and now I've got 20 amp circuits along here. Ran 220 down there for the compressor. I ran a line out to the trailer, a 30 amp line, so I could put the plug my trailer in without it being on a big long extension cord that it's been on for 10, 11 years. And I built that little nook over there for uh, shelving. I'm going to get rid of I had this, I don't know if you can tell, but I had this this uh, shelving unit here hung up on the wall and it was right over in this area and had all my chemicals and stuff on it and I've decided that I'm gonna I want to build a a nice workbench down this side it won't be probably be 18 inches deep and then come down all the way along this edge and then put uh, shelves up so I'll have more shelf space than I had before uh, I've got some shelving down there that I've had for a while that I'm gonna put up but uh, yeah it's it's gone crazy it went from being a you know she rocket so I can get it kind of warm in here to gonna put a furnace in this is out of my son's house. He got a new furnace, so I took this one and we're gonna I've got a gas line up there and I just ran power and we're gonna put that furnace here in the corner and so anyway it's gonna it's gonna be quite nice. I, I don't know if you can tell, but these lights I've got about two thirds of them up. I've still got to finish this row and put in another row interesting thing about these lights though is when they're on they mess with my garage door opener uh, the remotes won't work <laughs> so they're emitting emitting some kind of RF signal that is messing with my garage door opener so whenever I leave I gotta make sure that I shut the lights off so that I can get the garage door open when I come back but anyway this is kinda what it's looking like Hopefully when I get all the shelving up and stuff, it'll be, you know, better organized. Uh, yeah, I built this. Put my hardware, put household stuff over there. And then I'm going to take this part right here. And this is a bench right here. And then I think once I get it all painted, I'll put two or three shelves there and put you know have some more storage there but anyway just thought you'd want to see it it's taped coated textured painted <laughs> yeah, I got a little crazy on it but anyway uh, more to come all right been a few more days since the last time and check it out drywall is up all the electrical is in and I'm cleaning out I'm gonna take down those shelves clean off my bench so that I can uh, uh, tape and paint so here's my piles of junk that I don't know, I guess because my parents grew up during the Depression and went through World War II and <laughs> never threw anything away, I 
guess I'm kind of a hoarder that way myself, but gonna have to figure out a way to either get better organized or find a way to get rid of some of this stuff. Got a couple of sheds out in the backyard. I need to build some shelving in there. I might repurpose this shelving here out in one of the sheds and start stocking more stuff in there. But anyway, it's coming along really good. I've been looking for a new window and just trying to get everything put back together. Uh, but a couple more projects. Get this side of the get this side of the garage finished. Get this side of the garage finished. And then I'll come over here and finish this corner and put some shelving up here and make some changes over here uh, as well. Move some of this stuff out to the shed. I think I'm going to leave that bench so I have a bench back here to work off of and then put two or three shelves up there for yard stuff and got to move this cabinet. There's a cabinet right there. This is from our old kitchen when we remodeled and it was right there but that was like I think that's a better use of the space. So I'm going to take that cabinet there, mount it on the end of these put my uh, shooting stuff that I keep out in the garage, my empty brass and stuff like that that I keep out here and then like I say there's my furnace that's eventually going to get put in right here and we were talking about doing a vent up the wall and then doing registers across here so we'll see how that goes uh, almost into cooling season <laughs> So that might take a back seat. But anyway, my makeshift storage unit for all my stuff that was hanging on the walls. Oh, I got garbage. I got stuff. Got stuff. Anyway, get this all cleaned off so I can get up there and tape and mud and paint and so I can get back to working on the old truck. So uh, Saturday, it was on a Saturday that we hung this and I had my oldest boy Justin come over and we worked on his truck for a little while and then he went with me to get the sheetrock and I'm, I'm new to this YouTube thing, I should have recorded some of that and then my other son that's just younger uh, came over and helped me hang it and screw it off and you know, it was a lot of fun working with your kids. You know, it's it's a lot of fun doing these kind of projects with kids and your family. And but anyway, here it is. Okay, so it's uh, 23rd April. We're right in the middle of the oh, what is it? The Corona 19 freak out and people are working from home and a lot of people are out walking more people than I've ever seen out walking before but anyway here's here's a picture of the first coat we put on I've got the first coat and the nails covered I've, uh, that wall back there, I sheetrocked it probably, well, we've lived here about 13 years. I probably did that 12, 12 and a half years ago and never taped it. And so now it's got a coated tape, mud on it. And my goal is to paint from about the, work, get finished from about the door over there that you can see all the way around to this side get this done, get it put back together so I have some place to put all that stuff all that stuff right there I'll have to pull out, I'll finally finish these I finally put some mud on that inside corner over by the door going into the house and I finally I'm gonna frame and put a wood corner on the two outside corners there so 
been a lot of fun getting these things, getting it put together and making it nice. And the rest of my lights came. So I'll work on those over the next couple days, getting the next row in and getting all the lights done. And then we'll paint it. But here's our progress so far. It's really starting to, starting to look good. So I'll bring you back. We'll look at it after I put another coat of mud on it. Okay, out here in the garage again. Part of the remodel project is I've got the second coat of mud on. And when I go to do the third coat, I'm going to uh, bring you guys on and kind of show you how I do it. But right now, I'm just letting it dry. One thing I will tell you is when you're doing drywall, unless you got one of those fancy knives, it's best to do one side of the corner, let it sit, dry, do the other side of the corner. Save yourself a lot of frustration if you do that. And then your nails, once you do them one time, you only have to do them once and then when you go over them for the, when you do your top coat or the third coat of drywall, then you hit your nails again. But I'll show you all that. I mean, drywall, watching drywall is boring. But what I'm working on right now is on our local uh, classified site, I came across this uh, air, 60 gallon air compressor and uh, in the ad it said the last time that they used it it was slow to pump up so I brought it home I paid two hundred dollars for it I brought it home and I, I I'd already ran a 220 plug that's a 20 amp twist lock plug so that's it's going to sit in this corner and I plugged it in and I started running it and it took probably two hours to pump up so I'm thinking oh man I'm bummed I just spent 200 bucks and so I started looking at options I called this number on the front and they told me that all the parts are obsolete I'd have to buy a a new head a new pump for like three hundred dollars and I'm like nah I'm not gonna do that so I went on the internet and I shopped and Harbor Freight sells a, a head that'll fit it and you can buy on Amazon you can buy an aluminum one that'll fit on it and stuff and just out of curiosity I thought you know what I'm gonna tear this thing apart and see if I can figure out what's wrong with it I mean compressors are basically uh, engines. They've got pistons, they've got valves, uh, you know, pull the air in, push the air into the tank, you know, I mean they're, they're really simple and so I decided to take this apart so I did. So let me show you what I'm talking about and I've just started cleaning the head out so there's some garbage on here. But see it's a two-cylinder uh, the the valve assembly there's a there's an air cleaner that sits out here part of the head this is part of the head this sits up here like this and the, it pulls the air in through the valves pumps it up and then sends it down into the tank through this uh, through this hole this tube okay well compressors have this is the valve body. Sorry. This is the valve body. And <laughs> when I pulled it open, I saw this one. I don't know if you can see that, but I saw a little bit of air right there and I thought, oh, there's my problem. But then I noticed that this one, half the valve's gone. So I think my problem is they just got it hot for some reason it got hot and it uh, melted the uh, the valves you can see a little better on this side you know the they're burnt so what I'm gonna do is I went online and I found this other number this is a uh, Campbell 
uh, Heiser, Campbell Heiser or something like that, who makes this. And I found, I found that number. And so I typed that into Google and I can buy all these parts. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy a new head, a new valve assembly, and put it back together. And hopefully that'll take care of it. Let me, uh, let me jump up here and show you some things. So, so these are just like basically a car engine. You have, you have pistons and rings. And, you know, when, when it goes around, the compressor goes around, you know, it pumps them up. And I was looking, and there's no, there's no really severe scarring. Actually, I can still see, I know you can't see it with the camera, but I can still see some of the hash marks from the honing. So, I'm thinking that the head is okay and I uh, opened the drain and it didn't blow out there hasn't been any water sitting in it it was pretty dry when I blew it out so I'm gonna take a minute with a wire wheel on my drill clean the top of those pistons up finish cleaning the gaskets off and then I'm gonna order me a new valve body and we'll see how uh, see how it works but I'm pretty excited if that's all it is I got a oh this compressor new is probably any depends anywhere from six hundred to seven hundred dollars maybe five to seven hundred new and if I can uh, fix it I think the head piece that I need is probably I think around fifty dollars I would have gotten this for less than half and uh, I feel better about that. I was having some buyer's remorse, but it, uh, it looks good. So we'll bring you back and, uh, here in a little bit. Okay, so I'm back out here in the shop, or my garage, and I've got two coats on it's pretty smooth okay so what I'm doing now is I'm getting ready to put on the put on the third coat and the final coat and up to this point I haven't sanded anything okay uh, I'm not a professional but you know, if you do it right, you take your time and you know a couple things, you really don't have to sand a lot. So, what I'm doing is, I'm going over it real quick. I don't know if you can see it. Doesn't pick it up very good. A little bit right here. But you can see these marks where I, I, I trialed it. So what I do is before I put that last coat of mud on, I take just a regular knife and I just go down and I go over these and I just don't want to do that. But I just take the clinkers off off the wall and smooth them out a little bit, okay? Let me get you set back up so you can see me down there. How does that look? Okay. So I'm just going to go along and go over all the drywall. Just kind of knock down the, the what I call clinkers. Because they'll mess up your they'll mess up your final coat. Big one right here.
Okay, so you guys get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and finish knocking the uh, knocking these uh, clingers off, and uh, then I'll bring you back and I'll show you how I do the final coat of mud and how the way I do it kind of keeps you from having to do a lot of sanding if you sand it at all. I mean, it, after all, it is a garage and I'm not going to get too crazy with it, but all these, all these apply to everything that you do. So, uh, what you learn here, you can apply, you know, if you're going to do your, your house or your basement or bathroom or something like that. So, let me finish scraping this down and then uh, we'll put some mud on the wall. Okay. So, I've gone over this whole wall, going over all my nails, all my edges, knocking down all the really high stuff. So it's pretty flat. I could probably, well, I'd have to hit the nails twice, but I could technically, for a garage, this is probably done. Uh, but, I figure if you're going to do it, might as well do it. So, now I'm going to put some mud on. So let me take this seam, let me load up my pan. So, when I take, when I do the first coat, I usually use the mud uh, basically right out of the, the bucket. Uh, you can mix a little bit of water with it, but I like it kind of stiff so that it, uh, it uh, stays on the wall <laughs> for the biggest reason, you know. And then uh, for the second coat, for the second coat I like to put in some uh, water to the joint compound and thin it out a little bit, make it a little wetter. And it seems to lay down a little better if you do that. And then, same thing. Now this is topping. And the difference between topping and joint compound is joint compound has more glue or, you know, it's harder and it's made to, you know, to be more like the paper and the tape. Topping is easier to sand. has less glue in it. It's finer and it sands easier. So... Technically, you could do the whole thing with joint compound if you wanted, but if you're planning on sanding or anything like that, you're going to want to use, use some topping. So, what I usually do, depending on how big my job is, I buy a bucket of topping and I buy a bucket of joint compound. And then after that, you buy the boxes, and the boxes are cheaper. You just dump them into the, into the buckets and, and mix them up. So, anyway, let me load my my tray up. Okay, so the biggest thing to remember is what the effect you're going for. Uh, you know, if you're doing high-end houses, then you know you might put on four coats of mud. But let's see if I can get you in here. I don't know how well I can show you this, but I usually carry two different knives with me, a six-inch. And then I think this is a 10 inch. And they, you know, they go all the way up to, you know, real, you know, 12, 14 inch knives. But what I do is start in the middle. You want to cover everything that you've put on there before. 
Okay, I don't know how well you can see that. Okay. Then it's important that you use a knife that's flexible. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to flex the knife and you do what they call wipe it tight. Okay. Now I've wiped that tight to the wall. Then you come down and you flex it. And then you come down the middle. Wipe the edge tight again. Down the middle. Down the edge again. Up the side. Up the side. Up the middle. I got one little spot right there. And by wiping those edges tight and then going down the middle like that, boy, all right, so I don't know how well you can see that, let me move my camera. not really coming in very good but the idea is to just put a really thin layer over and then you have your six inch knife to clean up your edges but you just do a real small thin layer I mean you can almost see through it and this topping just takes out the little imperfections and then these little there's these little lines left from your trial here you go over those and hit, just go wipe down one time with the sanding pole and you're basically done so the key the key when you're doing drywall is you want a flexible knife so that you can bend it so you can wipe those edges tight wipe both edges both edges and then come down the middle and flatten it out and that's it so that's my drywall tutorial drywall 101 now the nails I don't know how well you can see that Let's see if I can tighten it up okay so you one coat the nails in the, the joint compound. That's the other thing about the joint compound is it shrinks. So you go over your nails the first time and cover them with something like this. You, you do some this kind of action and then you wipe it off tight. Okay, I don't know if you can see. If you can see this one, let's see. Oh, there we go. So, you put a little mud on it, and then you wipe it off. And now, if you've gone over and made a bigger mess, you go over the whole thing and wipe it tight, and then that will that'll cover that edge. And when you paint that, when you paint that with a little bit of texture that's on your roller, I don't even have to go back and sand those so anyway let's see if I can get these over here yeah so let me get down a little bit my camera doesn't want to cooperate okay so you see how I've really so I'm going to go over this whole thing, cover the whole thing with drywall mud, with topping. Then I'm going to come back with my big knife.
And now all I've really done is uh, feathered those edges. And like I said, those will blend in, you won't even see them. So anyway, that's drywalling. One last coat. Okay, I gotta get on this one. Finish it before it dries. So that ought to look good. I'll be back when we fix the compressor. <laughs> 